Good morning, I'm Janine. And I'm Chris, and welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. <laughs> Today's episode is all about knitting. Mm -hmm. I know, all this time we've been doing this, <laughs> and we didn't talk about knitting. We did not talk about knitting. We talked about all the extra other stuff, but we didn't really, like, I mean... She you had to push me. Shop. Yeah, she had. She goes, you know, we're going to have to talk about knitting. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we're going to talk about knitting. And Janine is our yarn guru, our doctor of yarnology. Yep. She is the one that fixes everybody's problems here in the store. She gives us ideas and she helps us learn a lot of techniques. So really today, we're just going to talk about the world of knitting and the tools that you need and yep. things like that. I'm going to pass it on to Janine and I'll interject here and there, but yeah, she's the boss today. So where do we start? Do we, let's start with, all right, we're going to start with different types of yarn. So a lot of people get confused with the numbering system for yarns that we have here in the United States. Uh, Europe doesn't have that. Theirs is a little bit different. Yeah. We call things different than what the Europeans call some of their weights of yarns. So we're going to talk weights of yarn first and we're going to start with the smallest and go up to the largest so with the numbering system we start with a zero a zero is lace weight lace weight is thin super spidery thin um, and this particular yarn we use in spinning for our core wool um, when we're doing uh core spinning for our art yarn and things like that but you can knit with this i've seen some people knit with that and put beads yes to do like those they're really intricate and beautiful mm -hmm. beaded lace shawls i will never do that she will never do that <laughs> it takes so much patience it's too small too yeah. for her um so you're going to use um double zero through maybe a us one or two when you're knitting with this but i've also seen people who buy this and they hold it with another yarn and it creates that light, airy, fuzzy look to their sweaters. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. I've seen them. They're gorgeous. Not one of my things I'm going to do, but we do carry this. And not one of the things to use in chai room. No, no, no. It's sticky. Sticky, sticky, unless you want to fight with it. <laughs> so this is actually crochet thread. And the reason why I brought this out is because the Fashion 3 is actually a size 1 which they label as a super fine. Um, it is also your sock and fingering weight. So there's a gray line there when it okay. comes to those kinds of things. But I've had people knit with this, like um, the American Girl doll dresses. This is perfect for that. I have one customer, this is what oh, she uses. I've never seen those. Yeah, they're fun. Um, and we'll talk about Ravelry later, but Ravelry has a lot of the American Girl okay. doll patterns up there. And this happens to be one of the things that she uses. So we can knit with this. Okay. This is actually a sock yarn, same weight as this. Now this is a one Seven super pieces. fine sock. And I knit those socks out of this color. So those are mine. So this pretty? color made that. So yes, I did find, I finally finished the second one, but I've got them done. So this is Reggio's yarn, but this was designed by Arnie and Carlos. It's their, I'm going to screw this up, <laughs> Lafatin colorway, and there's like eight different colors. I love this yarn. It's really fun, and a lot of other people have been enjoying it. And so there's that Carlos one. Carlos and Car Carlos. Arnie, Arnie and see. Carlos are two guys on YouTube that when the pandemic hit, they became very popular in the YouTube world. Okay. And for knitters, they have over 10,000 subscribers to their page. They got an award from YouTube for having over 10,000 subscribers to their page. Oh, that's awesome. They're still very popular, two videos a week. Um, and they have their sit and knit for a bit is one. And then they have their just their YouTube channel. So there's two. One comes out on Wednesday, oh, one comes out on awesome. Sunday. We'll put that in the links. Yeah, they're fun. Um, somebody hooked me up with them. Um, about a year or a year and a half ago and i thought oh, I'm not, yeah they're funny they're hilarious they, and it's not always about knitting okay um they talk about a lot of other stuff too but you got to go check them out you, you never know um the next yarn size is a size two which is hard to find it's the sport weight 
So sport weight kind of every once in a while gets caught in that fingering soft weight. So fingering sport, there's a there's that fine line. That's what this, my baby alpaca is. Correct. That mine. This is the only true commercially made sport weight yarn that I have in the store is the okay. Bella Cash. Okay. So it does exist, but you can substitute a sock or sometimes a DK yarn, which is the next one. So DK is a size three. Now I have two here. Remix is really nice. Where's my sweater? Okay. So this was knit out of this yarn. See, this was an easy pattern. I really enjoyed it. Um, very lightweight recycled yarns. So the ball bands have a lot of information. This is nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, and linen, recycled fibers and spun into this yarn. And this comes- That's awesome. Yeah. So if you're looking for something that doesn't have a wool and is recycled, environmentally friendly, we're gonna say to a point, um, but there's this. Um, and it comes in the DK, worsted, and the chunky as well. Okay. All three. So I didn't have a sample in the DK. So that was that. Uptown Worsted is 100% acrylic. This um, Uptown DK, a very popular yarn in the store. 100% acrylic, wash and dry. Same weight as this. And if you come into the store, you are going to notice differences in the actual size. If you hold DKs together, you're going to notice a difference. This is also a DK. Mm -hmm. That's one of Chris's dyed. Yarn. It's not commercial. Um, and this is, I, I, people are like, wow, that's the thickest DK, thick DK I've ever seen. But it is still it is technically still a, DK. a DK. And it's really weird that they kind of go from mm -hmm. so extreme. Because this compared to Remix, it's like two different yarns. Yeah. So, so there is a reason why they tell you to do a gauge swatch if you're doing a fitted garment. It is supposed to be done for hats and scarves, um, yeah, but debatable. it's up to you. Um, I don't do a lot of swatching. People know that I don't because most just, of my stuff is flat and I don't care. Yeah, so, that whole but swatching thing. We do talk about it. Yeah. So the next thing in line, well, we still have another DK. So can you hand, oh. hold up the color wheel first? Totally so this... Color Wheel by Sirdar, it is a long gradient. This was knit from another colorway of that yarn. The colors never repeat in the entire ball. This pattern's gorgeous. Yeah, so I, this was bottom up, so it did the light gray all the way up to the light blue, and it came out perfect. Um, I really like this one. Um, the really first cool. 14 rows, I will tell you, were a bear. I tell everybody that. <laughs> so if you're going to do it, you are warned ahead of time. So there's that. But that is another DK. And then Bamboo Pop is a cotton and bamboo blend. It's a 50-50. So there's an organization called the Knitters Not Knitted Knockers Organization. And they knit and crochet um, prosthetics for people who had vasectomies. And this is one of the approved yarns because it's next to the skin soft. It's so soft. But this little hat, this little baby hat. So a lot of the yarn companies, if you go to their websites and you look for a specific yarn and you click on that yarn at the bottom of the page or somewhere on that same page, they have patterns. This is one of their free patterns. It's a baby hat knit and seed stitch. And for those of you who know me, that is not one of my favorite stitches. <laughs> But it's beautiful when it's done. It, it adds is. a lot of texture to your work. I've never work. done the seed stitch yet. Yep. So if you like ribbing, you like seed stitch. Um, it's just not one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But I do like ribbing though. I suffered. It all, that only took me a few hours it's to so do. It's pretty. Look at the top. It's mm -hmm. all cute. It's gorgeous. So there's that. Um, okay. So that should be it for the DKs. Yes, ma'am. Then we're going to move on to worsted weight yarn. Worsted weight yarn is a size four. The Europeans call it. Aaron. So when you look at jewel spun, it says Aaron instead of worsted weight, but they're in for all intent and purposes, they are the same weight of yarn. Uptown worsted, again, just like the DK, 100% acrylic, you can wash and dry it. There are over 70 colors, a very popular line in the store. 
I feel like the same thing with the worsted that there is with the DK, that you'll pick up three or four different Mm -hmm. brands of worsted, and you're going to see three or four different sizes. Yep. Again, that's you where are. your gauge comes into play. And you yep. know, some of us would rather play chicken and then have mm-hmm. to undo it and redo it. Yep. The jewel spun is a variegated yarn. And if you you have the poncho. I do. The poncho. This is beautiful and heavy, and oddly. It has, <laughs> it has a collar. So this is gorgeous. Um, this was knit out of the jewel spun. This is one of the samples that I have. And it is a variegated yarn. But it is also a single ply, which means it was not plied at the factory. Okay. Uptown Wear said yes. Nordic Tapestry is a plied yarn. So this yarn is also a worsted weight yarn. And this sweater is one of their free patterns that was knit out of this. I love how the design just works its way in there. Yes, so this yarn is set so, so cool. that it has two different tapestry designs already in the yarn. The yarn does the work. It took me two weeks to knit this sweater here in the store, and which is super fast for me, but you knit the front, the back, and two sleeves. Basically, you're making a rectangle, and then a rectangle with a neck, <laughs> that's it. The sleeves I did at the same time. Um, but it's the yarn did all the work so if you can find a very simple pattern get a yarn that's going to have a lot of really cool either texture to it or patterning like this or even this variegated striping that or it's not really a striping i don't even know what we would call that one more of a marbled look it is um for that um that you're going to do so there's there's that one um if we step back to the dk's for a second This is actually one of Chris's yarns that I'm knitting a sweater out of. That's Galena. This is Galena. And actually, it goes this way. I can't tell. But this is the fingering weight. And I always said that I would never make a sweater out of fingering weight. But you know what? (laughs) I like this one. She fell in love with this yarn. So I started it in a different pattern, ripped it out, and went back to... This is the acid, isn't it? It is. the acid. I went back to the... um, very popular sweater pattern that we use in here from tin can knits that's the flax light so when we teach that that's what we use okay next oh our chunky yarns all right i love this alpine bear you can make stuffed animals out of knit you can um they also have serta has quite a few across their lines there's a bunny there's a puppy We've had, I did a dragon. Um, mm-hmm. it, no, he's a dinosaur. I got pieces. Oh, I don't remember that. I, it's because I never finished him. I have to finish <laughs> stuffing him. I came across him the other day. Okay. So here's one that I will be finishing soon. I love this guy. He has character. His head mm-hmm. tips a little bit. One ear is a little bit lower than the other. His eyes and nose. That was made with this. I'm like, what's your needle size chunky. for that? So this calls for 15. I probably used a 13 okay. because... When you're knitting characters that you're going to stuff, you will use a smaller size needle okay. so that there's no holes when you stuff. But like, so when I when I was doing the gloves with the furry mm-hmm. thing, I don't have to use a Absolutely not. No. I could use you what can, it calls for. Correct. And okay. what that's going to do is it's going to ruffle it a little bit more and give you a little more bulk around the cuff. Now, a lot of people, they've been using this for, like, the brims of hats. I used it for boot toppers. Yeah. Yep. I love chunky yarns for boot toppers Mm -hmm. because you don't, like, you make a fake leg warmer. It's really kind of cool because you make this really, you can make this bulky top, and then you can finish it however Mm -hmm. you want, and it sits inside the boot, but the top is all really cool. So this is great So that's one of our chunky yarns. Um, So that would be your five, six. She has a super bulky next to it. Now, this is a size 7. So, chunky is 5. Chunky bulky is size 5. Super bulky is a size Mm 6. Jumbo is a 7. And, like, so, what this needle size called for, this is a 13 to a 17. Mm -hmm. And, And I know that, okay, that's a few different size needles, but 
it depends on what you're making. You Absolutely. Know? If you're making like the slippers yep. that Tina made out of these the other day, she probably used more of a 13 mm -hmm. to keep it closer and tighter. But when you're going into something like this shawl, this is cocoa, right? Yep. This is cocoa yarns. Which is that super bulky. Yep. Yep. This is a size six. Yep. So, you know, this you might go ahead and do that 15 or that 17 mm -hmm. because it's looser. It's more flowing. But, you know, some people, when they first get knitting, like working with these smaller weights of yarn, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I did my very first pair of socks. Yeah. We did not use this. We did not. Because we... when I taught socks here in the <laughs> store for the first time, we actually used worsted weight yarn and made slipper socks. Because yeah. learning how to use, a lot of us didn't know how to use double points properly. No, so you're learning great. how to use a double point. You're using larger double points, larger yarn to learn the technique. And it doesn't take as long to finish it. Now, when you do a standard pair of socks, Never. so these are a size one or 2.75 millimeters what I use on mine and there's a lot more stitches mm -hmm. smaller yarn smaller mm -hmm. needle more stitches Those double points or flexi flips that small they'll just drop right out of my hands That's my hands her. don't do that anymore she doesn't do small stuff she does mm -hmm. big stuff I like big stuff and I cannot lie sorry I had um today I had a customer when she first started to learn how to knit she had an art yarn it was, really wasn't art yarn. It was that big twisted shrug that we did in the beginning that you held. Oh, like the thick and thin and a lopey. And a lope, held, yeah. You held, <laughs> you held two thick yarns together. It was on 19. And it was on size 19 knitting needles. So she or learned to big. knit with logs. Yeah. And then her next project was a size 15. And we gradually got her down <laughs> to where she's using like a, a four or a six knitting needle which is like your that's DK about weight. where i stop yeah smaller than that somebody better be paying me millions of dollars <laughs> to use them because i can't come up with a reason you know what i use my small my small double points for my macrame work to mm -hmm. pull out my knots yeah i yeah. use for knitting so we want to show you a couple other things this is that same cocoa yarn oh, and this so was cute. on knit on a size 15 and 11 needle mm -hmm. one ball for that Here's a I love another this chunky. This is um I love this because it comes in right here and it has like this little swirl pattern and it continues throughout. Malabrigo, this is one of their yarns. This was their Rasta. That was their I super like, bulky. That's why yep. I like it. I love Rasta. And I can't remember if I used a 13 or a 15 on this. It was out of their hat pattern book. I love that. That um, just makes my heart happy. Dishcloth. I like big circular. I want it to be bigger than my hand. Okay, so that's why these. This is a doily dishcloth. And we use these at home all the time. So when they get nasty, they last about nine, ten months. And my husband will go, I need more. So I pull out my size seven DPNs and okay. my worsted weight yarn and I make a bunch. You make that on because you start in the middle oh, and you work your way out. Obviously, I've never made one. Eventually, I get to like about here and it's big enough I can put on size 16 okay. inch circulars. Okay. circulars. Okay. Yep. And then I finish it. I love this. It's quick. It's easy. It's fun. It's a no-brainer for me. I've done 50 or 60 of them yeah, by now. You probably know that by heart. All the kids have those in their thing. This, sorry for the color. <laughs> Hello, are you awake yet? We got gotcha. you. This is Creative Bubble. And this is a scrubby yarn. <clears throat> and again, dishcloths. Yep. Um, but this is also soft enough you can Who use it for facial. in the browns colors? Who made me the one that brought it in? I have no idea. A lot of them were Tina, making them. Tina, Marsha, somebody from the knitting group made me one Could in the browns colors. Could have Karen or Cheryl. Oh, might have been Karen, actually. Mm -hmm. I think it was Karen that made me the one in the browns colors. It's kind of mm -hmm. nice. But this Soft is a lot shirt. softer than the one that you can get at the big box store. Yeah. And you, still scrubby. Yeah. Not like it's not. But it's also it's not, for not abrasive, but it's a softer mm -hmm. abrasive. It's good on your pots and pans. You can use that. Baby booties. 
See, you can do all sorts of baby so stuff. So when someone refers to baby yarn, typically it's that DK weight yarn. Yep. Same thing with that. But I think this may have been, no, nope, that's probably still a DK. I made this one. I like that one. It's pretty. It's pretty cute. So a lot of these things, if you see the things with tags on them, they're for sale here in the store if you need a last minute gift. Absolutely. Plug, plug. There we go. Um, <laughs> this, so another customer, she, she found these patterns in an old knitting magazine and she wanted to do a knit along <laughs> with me to learn how to do Kathy. stranded, yes, Kathy, <laughs> to do stranded color work. <clears throat> so we started with the hat and then we did the scarf. She finished her gloves. I did not. I have to do my gloves yet, but all the chaos on the inside creates this wonderful snowflake pattern on the outside. And this here is, I used Hayfield's Bonus Aaron with Wool is what I used. It's a really slow, Because I was trying to make sure I said it the right way. Like, hmm, um, what did I use? Yeah, Bonus Aaron. They're the large 920 yard balls. This is what okay. I used. So it's two color work. So okay. there's that. This is another example of two color work. That one scares the snot out of me. This was made out of the Bella Cash. Yeah. This doesn't scare me. <clears throat> this kind of color work, okay, I could get through that. That? It's the exact same thing. It's not, though. It is. You follow it's a really chart, not. you're good to go. You're There's still three only, colors in that. But you're only using two at a time. Doesn't matter. I still have to maintain three balls, and I am definitely not a juggler. You don't, but okay. And so this was called the Firefly Shawl, but we all call it the Dancing Cows. Because it, it looks like Dancing, dancing cows. cows. It does. I'm sorry. With Whoever hearts. designed that, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe dancing the cow most hearts. expert knitter in the entire world and theirs don't look like Dancing Cows. Um, okay, so we do a lot of knit-alongs here in the store. We People do. come to me and they go, I want to learn how to do this. And then next thing you know, there's five or six of them that go, we want to do this. Which side do you want to show? Um, I still have a lot of this. Okay. I don't know which side's the right side. I can tell on the other ones. This well, my probably... strings hang from both sides yeah. because I forget to move strings to the correct side. This is the right side. I Listen, think. I'm only an intermediate knitter, folks. I'm just barely above beginner. This is the start of the 10 stitch blanket. And we currently have about eight people making this. This is the second go round on this because we did this a few years ago. And I wasn't ready a few and years ago. And they started this again, which is a really fun project because you start in the middle and you work your way around and you go until it's as big as you want to be and you stop. And I'll show you the other side without the yep. ridges. So some of them have a decorative uh, chain stitch going through here to actually give it a little bit more texture. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, it's an option that you can yeah. do with the pattern. And you don't have some to. of their blankets are square. And some of them and are rectangular. Some are rectangle. Nancy and I both opted to do more of a rectangle because mm -hmm. we want to lay down across this instead of yep. square. And Nancy will do a second one because she didn't think she made enough of a rectangle. So yeah, but Nancy's also using hand spun yarn. She is. Which it's beautiful. Dear God, that's a lot of spinning <laughs> for a blanket. That is beautiful. Me crazy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. I do want to show. Oh, I love this sweater. Yeah. I keep trying to steal it from her. She won't let me. Nope. Nope. Not allowed. This get it. was a test knit that was done a few years ago. This is Doris Lewis's pattern, and that should be up on Ravelry very soon. And we will put the link in the notes below. Um, I had a lot of fun with this. This mm -hmm. is worsted weight, and I think mostly I used um, ultra wool for this one. Mm, it's okay. a very beautiful, not my color palette. But I like Which it. Which is why she should give it to me because it is my color. Look how pretty Stop. I look with it. Heather would have something to say about that. Yeah, actually but she would. Because this was a cardigan, you had a choice of putting on a button band or a zipper. And we did a zipper. We. And yeah, we. We, it's we. actually Rebecca. I watched them. Rebecca put a zipper in it for me. Which was fabulous. It was my, it was a Christmas that. present that year. It is the warmest. I've borrowed it on occasions. That is yeah, the warmest, very warm. cuddliest sweater in the universe. And I told Doris yesterday, I have to make a second one because this one's too big. Huh. You're still not getting it. <laughs> Fine. Now, before we go any further, okay. I want to ask a question. Sure. So, this was one of the hardest things for me when I first 
because I crocheted first, right? But I really still didn't understand yarns. Mm -hmm. um, when you pick up this ball and you're looking at this ball, like you talk about a zero, a one, a two, mm -hmm. those type of things. That's referring to the weight of the yarn, the size, the size of the yarn. But then each size of yarn designates needles. Correct. Now, doesn't the ball band, right, yep. tell us everything we need to know yep. for what we're going to do with the project? Yep, yep. So the front of the label tells you the manufacturer, the line of the yard, and a lot of times it'll give you a little extra information down here. And this one says 100% recycled fibers. <clears throat> if you turn it, it's going to tell you what the fiber content is and the washing instructions. Very important, especially if you're picking out items for a child or something that needs to be washed and dried, like your scarves, your hats, your gloves, uh, baby blankets, because we know babies can right. get dirty sometimes. Now, like here, it says care instructions and it has it written out. But if you come over to Nordic, it doesn't... It does. Oh, it does write it out. But it also has pictures. But it has the pictures. Yeah. So so the pictures tell you, you can wash it in your washing machine. You can dry it on a low cycle. Do not iron it. Do not dry clean it. And I have yet to figure out what the P in the circle is. Somebody will probably say so. Well, if you guys know what it is, please put it in the yeah, comments. Put it in because the comments. I don't know. But when we're done, I'll take a picture of each weight of yarn. And add it to the end. And I'll mm -hmm. also take a picture of the ball band so that you guys yep. understand, like, what we're talking about. Because it's hard to see in the video. Mm -hmm. But it, it does tell you that. And then and then there's more information on yeah. here. Um, the barcode has the colorway and the dye lot. And if you're doing a project that requires more than one skein of yarn, match your dye lots. And if you only see two on the shelf and you need three or four... I am very strongly going to recommend that you wait until I order a full bag in so that they're all the same dye lot. Believe it or not, even the important. commercial yarns, they can be off just a touch. This yarn and this yarn are the same yarn, but this one here, which was their first dye lot that they did in this, has a purple cast. And the new one does not. It's more blue. Yeah, I haven't seen the purple cast in there. No, nope. so you have to watch. The other thing is it will tell you some of them actually have the numbering system as well as light, which is also DK. Tell you where it's made. It'll give you their website and an email if you have questions or comments that I can't answer. It'll tell you this is a three and a half ounce or a hundred gram ball. It'll tell you the yardage and meters. <clears throat> Anymore, you get both. And then you have a gauge for your crochet and a gauge for knitting. And they will give you your four inch by four inch or 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square, along with the appropriate needles and how many stitches per row and how many rows you should get in that. Now, I will tell you. <clears throat> The thing I tell everybody, don't be so hard on yourself if you can get your stitch gauge, but you can't get the row gauge. It's almost impossible to get both. If you get your stitch back gauge and you don't get your row gauge and you need to go up a needle size, you're going to change your stitch gauge. Stitch gauge is more important than row gauge. And I have found even in sweaters, they don't tell you knit. 30 rows. They tell you knit until you have 11 inches. There's a difference there. So yeah. don't I know on the one pattern that I'm designing right now. Yeah. It's knit until you have 22 inches. Correct. So, Do not get hung up on that. I actually had someone come in. She goes, I've been struggling all weekend. Please tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm like, you're not doing anything wrong. This is how this works. She goes, thank you. And I can go home and finish this. <laughs> I mean, she it just frustrating. It does when you don't understand that the rows don't count. Correct. And then, you know, it didn't really want to get into this, but there is the school of thought of, so you do a, a test gauge. Well, do you wash it and block it? Or is it just straight from the knit? <sighs> Most people are going to do straight from whatever they knitted because they I don't want know to get many, on. I don't know many people that a will one will want to 
make that square, cut the yarn, wash it, right, lay it flat, block it, all of that, and come back to it and go, oh, I'm off. So what? I'm going to waste more yarn to do another yep. one. So, and that's Not why me. a lot of us, we do it just, we knit it, we measure it, we go. And a lot of your designers are going to go, you knit it, you gauge it, you go. Only those really super picky, picky, picky designers are going to go, you need to wash and block this first. Um, I bet Rebecca washes and blocks. She washes and blocks, but she doesn't wash and block her gauge. Really? No. Okay. Most times she does. I don't think she does. I'm going to ask Some patterns she will tell like, you. Because she's a perfectionist. She is, but so. she's, not, she's not that petty. Well, okay? No. So some of your um, things will. Um, some of your patterns will tell you. And you have to watch your pattern will tell you do a gauge in stockinette or do a gauge in garter or do a gauge in this pattern. Okay. It's really important to follow that as well. Um, real quick, let's yep. get into different types of tools that you're going to need. You are going to need knitting needles. Absolutely. These are straight knitting needles. These are bamboo. They also come in metal. You have circular knitting needles. These are two of the brands that I carry. This is a yep. set right here out She's of the bag. She's got the so you can see. So there's these. And, and the cord between them varies, just so you know. Yes. They don't all, they're not all this size. Length and size of the needle varies depending on what you need. And, yep. you know, we'll talk about that when you're in here. Double points. There's metal. There's bamboo. There's the bamboo. There's flexi flip. They come in different lengths. You can have six inches. You can have eight inches. You can have ten inches. Uh, Just depends on what you're doing. Yep. There are also these things called interchangeable sets. <sighs> I love both my sets. I have an Addy and I have a Chowdu interchangeable. Yep. Interchangeable love sets. Love them, and love them, love them. they all have different characteristics. Those it, are the squares. These are the squares. Oh, if I you come see. into my store, we will, I will even open it up so you can touch it, feel it, see what they're like. They're really cool. You have your four inch length tips and you have your five inch length tips and they have their place in our knitting world. Tapestry needles for darning in your ends. Knitting stitch markers, which are circular, mm -hmm. non-removable. They slide from needle to needle. If you knit one of these in, you either have to undo your work or cut it out. Just so you know. Removable stitch markers. These are normally used in crochet, but sometimes a knitting pattern will say... Mark your front side or something. Right. And you want a removable stitch marker. Yeah. You can use these for knitting and crochet both. These can only be used for knitting. Yes. Row counter. Um, or many, hashtags on a piece of paper. Right. There are many ways to keep track <laughs> of rows. This is a clicky one, which is really cool. I like this one. There's one that is green that is similar to it. It looks like a frog face. I like the rolling ones. I use ones. that one. I don't like the rolling ones. You have to stop, put my work down, turn it, go back to my work. This I can just go oh, and away I go. I like the rolling ones because I don't lose them. Right. Because they're on your needles. They're on my needles. I can't use them. Because if I'm not using the row, the little one that's on here, mm -hmm. that barrel, I'm hashtags on a piece of paper of my pattern yep. because those clicky things, I lose them every five seconds. Um, I probably have 10 of them. There's one in that bag over there too. <laughs> I need one that hangs around your neck. Well, the green one, you can put a lane. Frog? Yep. Yeah, you can put a thing on it. I need a frog. You also have um, ones that you can download on your phone. I and, have that. Yep, it's you, literally called row counter. She has row counter. I have B count. And you can go in and you can set them to whatever. I love bee count. I learned how to use it. <clears throat> and there's so much more that you can do there's in there. There's so much more. So row counter, mm -hmm. it's because it's one of the few things that's on my main, mm -hmm. main page for my phone. I accidentally open it all the time. Well, I accidentally opened it last night. Oh, and now I have the paid version of it because there's a lot more options I can highlight and stuff like that. But now you can write your own patterns in row counter, which was not a thing two weeks ago when I opened it. Oh, awesome. So either it uploaded or it updated, or, it updated yeah. or something. So that's kind of cool. Um, one thing I like about row counter is I can upload patterns into it from Ravelry, from yep. a website. 
and it helps keep track of those and it has a picture to where I don't have to go to my iPad or look at a printed thing. Yep. So that's another thing. So it depends on what you want to use and how into it you are. A mm -hmm. lot of people, they have notebooks and they just hashtag or, yeah. okay, so I have to do rows one and two, 20 times, one, two, one, two, one, and, ten, and then mark them off as they go. Alex has that, whatever that he uploaded into his iPad mm -hmm. and he uploads all his patterns in there and very similar to what you use. Is it? I don't know, yeah. but it looks complicated, but yeah. he loves it and yeah. it just helps him keep track and graph mm -hmm. out what he's doing. So, these are really fun. They are fun. Project bags. This is one of the new ones. Oh, I so, I have this. two people who design these for me this in the store. Good. I'm going to open it while you're talking. Well, I was going to open it, but go yeah. ahead. Talk. I like the zipper. This one has a handle, too. Yeah. So, these are quilted. And it has a pocket on the inside. has a flat bottom. You can set it and use it as a yarn bowl. So you can put your yarn in and it'll stay and you can use it for that and then just push everything back in and zip it up. And this is Sailor Girl Fibers, right? Yep. Yep. That's Ingrid. I love she Ingrid. does a great job. She does beautiful stuff. And <clears throat> then I have another person who does the round ones. I like, the round I ones like too. this. They collapse <clears throat> when you're not using them. They have a really cool closure on top. Okay. When you put your projects in there and you pick it up, it's like this. I mean, this one you can get um, oh, a sweater in this worth, one. Yeah, you can get a whole sweater in there. This has... And he's got some bigger than this and smaller than that. Yeah, so there's just working one the bigger than this. So the there's a 6, 8, 11, and 14 yeah. inch. And they go the diameter across the bottom. And a lot of different material patterns and things like that. And they run anywhere from... 15 to 30 dollars depending on the size and the material absolutely um what else really the only other thing is like as you get going in the knitting world um like i said i'm just an intermediate knitter so i'm not an expert by any means janine is probably in that expert category because i don't think there's anything she can't do or at least figure out right because i mean you help everybody find all their mistakes in their it's work. my superpower it is their superpower i can and dissect it's... a pattern i don't know why it just makes sense to listen me. on the days that i babysit and she has to run an errand and i'm stuck here and somebody goes chris can you help me i'm like maybe hey no. <laughs> no i did i did she did somebody knitted an extra stitch and didn't realize they knitted an extra stitch and i fixed it and then i was pretty proud of myself but so when you get towards, when you start getting into the intermediate pattern, you know, some basic stitches and you start to understand like, okay, I've done a sweater and I've done a hat mm -hmm. and a scarf and gloves and slippers. You can start to design some of your own work, which is what I started doing with alchemy. Um, I did, this is the halogen beanie that we did, which is, I love it. I love it. It's two skeins of yarn, but you only use about half the skein of each mm -hmm. one. And I actually designed this because Peg Mayer has a wonderful, wonderful pattern on Ravelry. She has to reach the it. The lozenge cowl, <laughs> sorry. And I, I love her cowl so much. Like, it is it is fun. I, I, I absolutely love how she did this. And I wanted to, to design something that wasn't identical, but something that would live together with it in mm -hmm. harmony. Because when you do her pattern, you end up with half a skein of yarn left on each of the skeins and I was like, well, we need to not let people waste those right. skeins. So this used up the rest of the yarn in the skeins for that. And that's my halogen. And then this is Ricky the sheep. This is Ricky the sheep pattern. And both of these patterns, this is very, just barely past beginner, barely, because there's a tiny bit of color work in it and not anything like her three colors of color work in mm -hmm. the scarf, but there's just a little bit of pattern work in it. And again, with the halogen, it's just barely past beginner because the little bit of color work you do, it's easy. It's easy to carry that yarn through mm -hmm. as opposed to some of the crazy things with the seven colors and all yeah. that. She got bit by the design bug and we I have did. kits and we do, and we have kits, but you'll see like not even just me, but other designers out there, will make knitting easy for you and they'll give you a kit that has all of the yarn that has the pattern 
all of your instructions. And it just makes life easy sometimes mm -hmm. when like, because places like Ravelry, we keep saying Ravelry and Ravelry is awesome. It's this global It's a community site. of knitters yeah. and crocheters and any pattern you want to find is up there. It's, it's amazing. And you can pick like different weights of yarns. You can, you can filter out whatever you want and then it just lists the patterns and you get a library that you can store things in. Um, and for those that design, you can upload your stuff on Ravelry as a free pattern or to sell the patterns. Both of mine are up on Ravelry. Um, and it's kind of nice. And the, the community, people are so nice. When you reach out to the designers that, like, if you have yeah. a question, I would say 90% of them are very much, let me help you with that. So it's a great community. And it's yep. a great way to find patterns if you don't want to just Google sweater pattern because God help right. you. <laughs> yeah. You'll see so much stuff out there. Yep, yep. So um, that's our world of knitting. We ver barely scratched the surface. I know, but you needed an introduction for those that do other fiber arts but don't knit, mm -hmm. which I don't know many, but there could right. be some out there. There are. You needed to be exposed to what you can do within the knitting world and what the differences of yarns are that are out there. Janine is a fabulous teacher, fabulous teacher for people that need to learn, want some help getting better, you know, if you are a beginner and you're like, well, maybe I need to learn some new stitches or mm -hmm. Jean's really good at finding the right pattern for where you're at to help you advance on to the next level of knitting. Because honestly, I feel like we're never done advancing no. in knitting. We're always learning something new. We're always getting a little better, a little better. You know, our attention when we started was really loose and then we get a little better and oh my God, look, it actually looks like it's knitted together and not something with big holes and gaps in it. And, and Janine can help with that. So if anybody's local and they need that kind of help, come to Long Tail Knits. Call Long Tail Knits. Ask Janine for a class. Yep. She'll I schedule those one-on-one. On one. Or like I said, we do occasionally, um, we'll do a group who wants to learn how to knit sweaters or cardigans or the blankets or we'll do socks. Or I've had people like, I just need to learn how to do a hat. Okay. You know, my fees are minimal when it comes yeah. to that. Very and, minimal compared to others. Right. And it's, I work with you from beginning to end. You know, with the sock, I help you go through the first one. Because by the time you're done with the first one, you should know how to do the second one. But I'm here to help you. I support you. That's what all of our open groups are for as well. Yeah. A lot of people come and sit and they never crochet or work on whatever it is. And if they have a question, there's someone here that can help them. If I'm busy, there are other people sitting at the table that would love to help you. Oh, oh and by the way... I knit this twice because the first time I knit this yarn, I didn't like the pattern, ripped it out, knit and this did a one, different pattern. and I wear this one all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. I know you were like, last day I can wear this because yeah. Mother Mother Nature mm -hmm. decided yeah. to inflict us with, with some, another snow. Yeah, welcome some more to snow. April. Um, so this is the beginning of April. Yep. Well, middle of April now. Um, what classes do we have coming up? Do we have what's going on in April? April is. <laughs> busy. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of all over the place. It's all over the place. Um, we have, well, the full calendar is up on the homepage Absolutely. of the website. And of course, she asked this and I didn't bring the calendar with me today. It's okay. I'm it's good. okay. Um, I'll, put it up. I'll put it up in the comments. Which you did last time. Yep. It was on the yep. last one. That's I'll why I didn't think about it. But we have, um, we have, if you want to do spinning, just call the store because we are doing those um, one on one or a couple people at a time. And I'll get you in touch with the instructor. We are doing weaving workshops. We have needle felting workshops, dyeing workshops. We have a new workshop. And this is what she's waiting for. We are no. going to start introducing macrame into the store. I'm so excited. So that's the new thing. Chris is going to be teaching that. Um, and all of these things under the events tab, you can click the link and you can read all the specifics. Yeah. But please, I cannot stress this enough. You need to call and sign up for these workshops. Absolutely. You need to let me know so that we can prepare. If we need materials, if I need to make sure I have enough space on the table to do what I need to do. Absolutely. You need to let me know. Um, the only one that you can walk in on is the basic needle felting one. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, is it, let's hope I have the date right, April 23rd? Is that the yes. weave-in? Yes. Coming up? So, first time we have an all-day weaving event here in the store from nine to five you must have your own loom now it's rigid heddle rectangle tri-loom 
ink loom, any weaving technique, this is what we're going to be doing. I'm so excited. And I'm going to say it, it's $40 for the day and that's it. Yep. We're not teaching anything, but we have several samples set up on looms that you can see different things that you can make Absolutely. that we have taught here in the store. Um, I teach all the rigid huddle, tri-loom and rectangle loom mm -hmm. workshops. So if there's anything you want to learn there, it's me. We can do that one-on-one -on -one, or you can yeah. wait till the next group. We just had one. Yes. Uh, April 2nd, we just did one yeah. for rigid huddle basics. Um, and to learn any advance, obviously you need to have your own loom and then I will teach you how to do that technique. Yeah. Um, super fun. That um, weave-in day is a great time to bring a work that's already on your loom that you're like, oh my God, I, I just got to get two this months ago. off my loom. Right. It's also like if you're struggling to come up with an idea of mm -hmm. what to do, it's a great day because there's going to be yep. a lot of people here that can help you pick colors and give you ideas. And that's always so much fun. So there's that. But back to knitting. Yes. So we are also going to attach... Um, a video at the end to show you a couple of different um, techniques for cast-ons that I use I here in the store for teaching and they're different and they have their place. So we're yeah. going to be doing that uh, as an add-on. So don't think this is the end. Just keep watching. She will have pictures of some of the yarns and labels. And I'll put the then, pictures of the yarns and labels after the after the short video after the for, short video for yeah, the cast-ons. For the cast-ons. Yep. Show those real quick and they shouldn't take that long. So we're going to get going because Cameron Van says, you know, wrap it up a little <laughs> bit here, guys. So we're going to go. If you have any questions, please reach out. We are longtailknits.com, longtailknits Facebook, yours. Alchemy.com, Alchemy on Facebook. And the Blue Fiber Tree on YouTube and Facebook. Oh, yeah. So reach out. And link. there's some Instagram in there that yeah. I keep forgetting about. Like, like the pages. Please. Comment. Please share with your friends. Um, we appreciate all the feedback that we are getting. We need direction. If there's something you want to know about or learn or have us show you, please. We are open to any suggestions. And Absolutely. Or we're going to start repeating. We don't want to start repeating because we will. Well, I mean. We're going to anyway. We're going to <laughs> some point anyway. We'll overlap. But yeah, sorry we ran so long. But they're really, I mean, it's just. We didn't even scratch the surface in knitting nope. and everything that's out there, but it's at least a beginning, hey, these are the types of yarns that are out there, you know, the weights of yarns, the tools yep. that you need, and give you some ideas of what you need to get started. Yep. And don't run out and buy all this stuff. No, no, you don't need it all at once. No. We no, start no. slow. <laughs> yeah. We start slow. We start slow. Pair needles and some yarn. <laughs> yep. That's it. And that's it. That's exactly we'll where we going. start. We'll get you going. And then we'll talk about the other stuff later. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, you guys have a great day. Absolutely. Have a great day. And yeah. we'll talk to you in another couple weeks. Yep. Bye. Bye. I'm going to be showing you how to do a couple of different knitted cast-ons. And I'm going to just use some worsted weight yarn and a size 9 double point to demonstrate this. So you make a slip knot and put it on your left needle it up a little bit not too much and this is the knitted cast on and you're going to go above the knot inserting under that front loop from front to back you're going to yarn over pull through like you normally would but we're not going to slide this stitch off because we're casting on so we're going to make this loop big and then with the left needle we're going to come under the front loop on the right hand needle slide out the right hand needle pull everybody back to the gauge point of the needle and tighten up your loop and then you're going to repeat go under the front loop wrap around make a big loop and go under from the front edge of that loop on the right hand needle once you get going with this, you're going to realize that you really don't need to remove the right hand needle. It is in position if you just maneuver it to the back, tighten your yarn up a little bit, and just keep on going. There is a similar knitted cast on called the cable cast on that starts out the same way as this, but instead of continuing to move those stitches onto the left needle from the right, you're going to go 
between the two stitches like that you're going to go between them not into the loop wrap around pull through and again underneath that front loop slide everybody back make sure you keep this one loose or else you're not going to be able to get between and it's just a different cast on and that's just the cable cast on as opposed to the knitted cast on. Your edge is going to look like that. Another cast on type is where you take a crochet hook that is the same size as your knitting needle. You make a slip knot and put it on your crochet hook. You take your knitting needle and lay it to the left of your crochet hook with your working yarn to the left of the knitting needle you wrap around the crochet hook and pull up a loop that's just a chain with your knitting needle and your crochet hook in this position you're going to go between with the working yarn and go between them and pull it to the left of the knitting needle and over the needle with the crochet hook and pull up a loop just a chain this is a little awkward at first, but once you get going with this, you can do this pretty quickly as well. This is nice because it is a looser cast on. Let's put my yarn. It's a looser cast on. And it gives a very decorative edge on your cast on edge. And I love this for hats, scarves, anywhere that you want something a little different from your other cast ons and it looks more like a chain so hopefully you can see that now when you are casting on this method the loop that is on your crochet hook actually counts as one of your knit stitch and you just need to move your yarn to the back and slip this on to the front and then you are done with that cast on and so the um, slip knot and the loop on your crochet hook also count as your stitches, okay?